So CTO meetings started almost in year 2000, uh, where um, it was found to be an opportunity for industry and operators at the executive level to come and discuss among themselves and with the TSB director uh, important standard issues and how the ITU could be organized to address those uh, urgent industry needs. Um, in the context of that um, uh, CTO meeting, we have seen many new groups uh, get formed because of the CTO meeting. Uh, we saw new standards emerge because of uh, the CTO meetings. Um, and it really allows for that uh, combination of the top-down at the executive level, plus at the engineer's level in each company, to uh, have that synergy between what's the industry, where is the industry going, what is the need of the operators, uh, and merge that with the uh, contributions that come to our study groups. So it's a very healthy way to um, have this dialogue uh, once a year on a global level in conjunction with the telecom world. So this year, um, unsurprisingly, 5G was the topic of most discussion uh, and looking at 5G from various angles. We looked at 5G security, uh, 5G quality of service, 5G deployment scenarios, uh, early deployments and the learnings we have from uh, 5G, the use of machine learning and artificial intelligence in 5G, um, and that took pretty much a lot of the uh, discussion, the time of the discussion. We also started looking beyond 5G. What are some of the fiber optic network infrastructure and protocols required to not only uh, meet the requirements of 5G, but beyond 5G? Uh, we looked at the infrastructure sharing becoming yet more important in a 5G era. Um, and we also looked at the, the uh, business models of deploying 5G, especially in developing countries. What would uh, trigger a developing uh, country operator to move from 4G to 5G? Um, so all of those discussions really were of uh, top quality because uh, the players and the uh, uh, people sitting around the table are the CTOs who have to make those technical decisions and uh, are the ones faced with the challenges. Um, in addition, we had the study group chairman and the focus group chairman around the table. Uh, so they took firsthand the input of the executives of what's keeping them up at night and what are the next things that these study groups uh, need to work uh, on. We also had the TSAC chairman. Now we're in a year where we're preparing for WTSA, the World Telecom Standards Assembly. And one of the things the assembly will be looking at is the new structure of the ITU. Uh, and an observation was made during the meetings that, that uh, in the last 12 years, the structure of the study groups hasn't really been changed much. And given all the changes in the industry and the technology, there was a call to look at that uh, with uh, you know, more attention and more focus uh, this time around in uh, WTSA 2020. All right, so um, the immediate impact, there is some short-term elements that where the study groups and the focus groups are taking this input from the meeting to enable new elements, for example, the, the 5G security. There was welcoming of the Ottawa Accord that looked at uh, exchanging threats. And at the same time, in study group 17, we have a new standard that in, would enable uh, threat exchange, security threat exchange, and how a playbook would, would run in a network operator in a 5G era. So some of, the, some of those are some of the quick wins. But in terms of long-term strategy, I think it was clear that the study groups might have to restructure uh, in a more dramatic way to address the digital um, uh, conversions in the digital era. Uh, the fact that ICT is being used in various verticals, healthcare, transportation, uh, you know, uh, and, and so on and so forth, might lead to some new thinking on how our study groups might be uh, structured. Mm -hmm.